What's up guys? So this week we're going to go more into animations and this time I'm going to be integrating it with the differential equations library and we're going to see how we can use both of them. Now first we're going to look at some example code like what you see here. We're going to tweak it a little bit and I'm going to implement something different. Now like before I'm assuming some Julian knowledge so if there's an aspect I'm not fully explaining it's probably because I've already covered it in a previous video in which you'll see them appear me above in the top right corner. I also have timestamps throughout the video in which you can go to the part that you're most interested in. Please give this video a like, subscribe, and let's get into this. All right, so first, before we go into the actual code, just to describe the system, we're actually looking at this Lorenz system, and this is just the wiki page that they have on it. It's a set of equations that have more chaos solutions. And these are the, the equations that we'll be working with. Just to give some more context, cool wiki page, cool information. You can see some of the animations that they actually have. Now going into the example, you can see they're calling the libraries, they're creating the function. This is actually the, the DE system that we saw before. They're defining their initial parameters, the T-span. So last time when I did the DE library, I didn't have parameters, but this is now them creating parameters and they're inserting that into the problem, solving it out and plotting all this stuff out. And you can see these are just plots. So in this case, these aren't animations. Now, if we look at the plotting library itself, they actually have an animation of it but they do it differently. So you can see here, they're solving it out and they create this cool animation, but here they're actually not using the DE library. They, they create the function and they do this time step. And as they're creating the animation, they're just actually taking a time step and pushing it through and then creating the animation as, as they go through. So it's slightly different between the two. So the, the differential equations library here, they're not doing the animation, but they're using the ODE library while the plotting library is doing the animation, but they're not using the DE library. Now for our code, what we're going to do is going to use both where we're going to use the ODE system, solve it out and apply that solution to the animation. Okay. So this baseline code is pretty much just a mix of the first two setups. We have the function, it's creating the set of equations and it's taking in the parameters and the independent variables and all this, We're defining our initial conditions, which are the same as before. But then my Lorenz system has a couple extra parameters. Sometimes our set of systems require extra parameters. And yes, I could just input this into here, but if you're actually trying to generalize the equation, because let's say this wasn't your only set of parameters, let's say you had multiple steps that you wanted to test out, be easier if this was generalized as some p variable and you could just keep on inputting all these different p arrays into this one function. Now next going into these tolerances I have the relative tolerance and the absolute tolerance and this is just so my solution solves out a lot better and it's a lot more accurate. Now it's also good to know that tolerance will alter how fast your equation solves out so if speed is something that you would need then you have to gauge how accurate you want your solution to be. I input this problem into the solver, solve it out, and then I get this end length just so I know how many frames I'm going to be working with. Now this I actually haven't done before, but plotting 3D, which is essentially plotting 2D, but you now have a third axis. This code here follows the same stuff in the plotting example that we saw, where in here I have the X axis, Y axis, and Z axis defined. I've labeled them, I've defined their limits, I've titled my plot, created a marker size, I want my marker to be black, and then I'm inputting a DPI just so that it's really a clean design. Now this one is here just so that there's something predefined and this is what's going to allow us to push up onto this 3D plot and then we'll animate along. Now before getting to animation, let's look again at what they did. Now for my code, I'm using at animate, they're using a different macro at GIF. A similar idea where they're going for i from 1 to 1500 they're going to step through now the step function is what alters the Lorenz system that they have defined now their system they have it set up like this if they have some dt this seems to determine how large their step size is these are all their parameters their x and y and z this is where they're starting off initially and this step size is going to determine this dx dy dz and then redefine lx, ly, lz over here based off those differences and then change x, y, and z as you can see that that's how they access the, the field elements. So they call the step size by inputting the initial Lorenz function so they define it here. They input it into the step size. After they call this function they pull out the field elements and they call this into the push function and that pushes it onto the plotting library. 
and they do that every 10 steps and they keep on going through until they hit 1500. So you can see it really is just a step size. They start out here and they solve it out and it's just going, going, going and solving out along the system and then it designs this Loren system. Now for us, we're actually not starting off at 111. We're starting off at what they use here. So we're using 1510. So we're going to create a system that looks like this. We won't have that offshoot that you saw from before. And in our case, we're just going to use a solution and push that onto our animation. So similar idea as last week, I have this animation. It's equal to that animate macro. I'm going for i to the size of my solution. This is why I defined this. And in here, I'm now just accessing that solution object. First, second, third are x, y, and z respectively, because that's how I defined x, y, and z. And then that ith variable is that time step of the solution object. So we're just accessing that, pushing it onto the animation, and then creating the animation. In this case, I'm doing it 60 frames per second, and then I'm running all my code all together. And okay, this is this is what we have. And as you can see, it's solving out, it's going through, it's going through the animation, and this is gonna run for a little bit because I, I took a lot of time steps. Now, another thing to notice is how curvy this looks compared to the other animation, and that's because of the tolerance that I put into my, my function. You remember with how they solved it, they did a time step, and it's just going to make it a bit more jointed. Now, looking at the animations documentation that they have, they also have a lot of cool examples. So they have the circle, and it has this series alpha that's being applied, but then it's also doing this rotation about where it's, it looks like the snake eating its own tail. They do it again here, but this is just with the different frames per second. Now here, they actually start to add some color and it's going a lot faster. And here they changed up the function and now it's a heart. So if we're looking back at how their macro works, they're taking an X, a Y, and this I, they're getting the length of X. Now next they call the circle shift function and this is actually what's causing this look of rotation that's going on about. You don't know what circle shift does. It's kind of the idea if you had an array of one, two, three, and you called circle shift on it and you wanted to shift the elements, it would shift it three, one, two. So it shifts everything about. Now call and calling the circle shift, they're calling it onto their own data and they're causing it all to just keep on shifting on about and it looks like the snake is eating its tail. Now they add some extra design where they're doing this line width, so that's why it's a lot thicker here and then just gets skinnier and skinnier. They do the series alpha, which is also gets darker here, but then it lightens up. And then the aspect ratio and the labels just they want this to be a square and they don't want a legend. Now looking at our code, we're going to do something similar. So we're also going to call circle shift on our own data. We're also going to do a series alpha. I'm not going to do a line width. That's because there's so many lines that it actually looks really ugly for a line width on the Lorenz function. Then I'm just going to do an aspect ratio of the label and I'm going to feed it the three variables. If you want to think about it, all the data is there. It's always constantly there. But depending on how the series alpha is going to make it look, you're going to see a white little fade out and it's going to be moving along. And that's going to be the circle shift that's causing the animation to look like there's a particle moving around within the Lorenz function. Okay, now going back down here, now we're going to do something similar again. So in this case, instead of me going just one to N, I'm going to take 10 steps just so it doesn't have to create as many frames. I'm still inserting all the variables again, but once again, you can see I'm inserting the entire array. I'm not doing just that ith variable. The ith variable is still being inserted into the Lorenz macro because it uses that for the circle shift. Then I'm also going to give it this extra variable for the color. And rather than red or the blue, I'm going to do a thermal design and we're going to see how this animation comes out. Okay, and here is our new animation. Now it's going to do that little bit of a tail design and it's actually really tr hard to track it because it's going so quickly now. You can see that it's darker in some spots and then there's like some particle just beaming through the entire animation. But this is still pretty cool design and I'm just trying to show more aspects that you can add to your animations and maybe cool effects that you can add with your designs. Another point that you can see here and also that you can see from the documentation standard even though my macro is designed to take in these four arguments, it doesn't mean it can't handle more arguments. These four are just the ones that I'm explicitly going to implement and they're going to use in some kind of factor. So you can see I used the I for this. And I did some little function notation here, and this is what's being input as data. But I still gave it this extra argument here because this is the plotting macro 
and then any of those extra arguments, it just gives it to the, the plotting design. So it would be using the plot 3D design that we saw up above here. And then it's just adding the extra color to it and working with that. Okay, and that's what I have for you this week. Now, an extra little point I do want to make is that Julia updated to 1.6 as of a week ago, two weeks ago, something like that. If you run your Julia REPL, you should see your version right when you start up. If you're not on 1.6, I do recommend you go to 1.6. The I know the plotting library sometimes takes long to compile for some people, and it's definitely sped up a lot in the 1.6 version now. You should see some speed up with the plotting library. I also have another video where I kind of go into how I plot so I can plot more quickly. It should be popping up right now. But hopefully you enjoyed all that. I'm getting to the point where I'm probably going to start switching topics and going more into math and physics. So stay tuned for that if you're more of a physics person. Of course, I'm still going to go more into like Julia libraries and Julia projects that I find that I think are cool. But it's just giving me more stuff to talk about, especially because that's actually what I study. Okay, please give this video a like and subscribe. The Twitter and IG links are in the description. I'll be posting weekly announcements about the channel. If there's another topic that you want me to cover, feel free to comment in the sections below. Tweet at me at Twitter at DJ's Office Hours or email me at DJ's Office Hours at gmail.com. Hope you learned something new and I'll see you guys next week.